Guys, let's go ahead and, and check in on this. And to do that, let's redraw the picture as more of a geometry picture. And this was the last thing we wrote in your notes on Monday. So it's basically that. And we're trying to figure out now, the, the only hard part of this problem, or not hard, but like different than what we did the other day, is the fact that we're trying to find time to get around, but not, but like that's new compared to what we wrote on Monday. But otherwise, it's just a distance problem. So, first thing to note, these are tangents from the same point. How many of you got your notes and read what that tells you? Tangents from a common point. What is true about tangents from a common point? They're congruent. Okay, so good deal there. Okay, so these two are congruent. Um, we're told the radius of the Earth from the picture is 6,371. You want to pay attention? What's true about that angle right there? Okay, so that was another thing we wrote in our notes. For us, it was the bottom of the previous page, if you followed or copied what I did. Tangent and radius. So the radius is perpendicular to the tangent, so it's 90. Okay? So that is a 90 degree angle. Also, over here, a 90 degree angle. Okay, you can look at this like a kite, but it's probably better because of tools to look at it as two triangles. Okay, we also can get the distance of this green line. How? I kind of said it a little bit ago. But the radius plus the distance that we know that um, satellite is above the Earth, okay? So above the surface of the Earth. So as we start adding some numbers in, we know that, and then both of these are 6,371. All right, when I look at this, I see two right triangles that are, number one, they're identical. They're congruent to each other, so I really only need to solve one of them, but the big idea being that I see two right triangles, and then we have all sorts of tools for right triangles, uh, but we don't know any angles other than the 90, so what is left to try to find this distance right there? Let's call it x, and then by congruence, put it over there as well. Yeah. Since you have two side lengths and you're just solving for x, you can use Pythagorean's theorem. Yeah, Pythagorean thing. Um, I, need, I need to add this also. Okay, so this is just going to be the Pythagorean theorem, which on Monday we saw was the most common use of this also. So far we haven't done any of these kind of problems with trig ratios. Okay? The only important thing to remember is that this green line is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So the 90 is out with the radius and the tangent, so the hypotenuse is the line in between. Which means, and guys, these numbers are going to be big, but that's fine. Which means that this total needs to go for C. And I'll add it up in a minute, so just for now, I'll just write it in here. Okay, so that whole thing squared is C. C squared. And why, again, are we finding X, what I've labeled as X? I'll find the distance. That's the distance from the ground station to the satellite down to the other ground station. Yep, so your, good job. Your message is going to shoot up to the satellite and then shoot back down to the other station. Okay, so that distance is what we need in order to use the speed to find the time. Kind of like if I said it's 250 miles to Denver, how long will it take you to get there? Right? Well, you just divide the 250 by your speed that you go, and then you'll have the time. We just need to know that distance. 
So this is a lot, like big numbers. I mean. So I think what I'll do is just continue to write it this way and say x squared. So I'm just going to subtract that over equals 6,000. Let's do it this way. And then how do I undo this squared to get the distance? Square root. Square root both sides. Okay, so this goes in the calculator. Does everybody know what the parentheses are referencing? It's that thing, right? Just Okay. So square root of thirty five seven eight six minus or not minus plus six three seven one plus six three seven one. So that whole thing is our C value. So square that whole thing and then subtract six three seven one squared. And I'll, I already have it in the square root, so I'm just doing everything all in one click. And so we have each x value is 41,673 miles. Or kilometers, I guess this is. Okay, so that's one side of this. So what's the total journey length? Yep. Four one six seven three times two. So eight three three four six. That's the total kilometers. How do we get the time? Divide it by your speed of light. Um seems to me go up. 300,000 kilometers per second is roughly the speed of light. Okay? Super, super fast. So what was it? So it's going to take 0.28 seconds. Pretty fast, huh? To go uh, 83,000 miles. But light is super, super fast, as you may have known. How'd that go for you? Can we, can we at least bring it back to this picture is really just what was on your homework? Right? Like a version of it. Where you use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for a length. How did the homework go? Any that you'd like to do? I just gave you two of them. Two. Let's do number three. Let's do number three. Actually. Uh -huh. I know, right? Alright, now number two. Wow, look at that. It looks almost identical to the one we just did. So it says, what is the perimeter of quadrilateral PQRS? Basically the perimeter of that pipe. And we're told that this little segment is 4. And what is this QR called? That's, I'm just really like PQRS, that's this. You know, in a, in a heart trace. You know, like what I'm talking about, an EKG, an ECG rhythm on your heart, you name the waveform PQRS. This is the QRS complex. This is the P wave, the repolarization of your atria, or excuse me, your ventricles. So, oh, how do you know this right now? Anyway. I was an ER nurse for a while. Come on. That's cool. Come on. I've never seen that show, so I don't know. We're watching it. It is not very 
Anyway, PQRS, you should know that. Do not have a problem with your Q wave. Well, here's the thing that sometimes is hard about these, is seeing where else you can put stuff. So, like, I can copy the 5 there. Why? Because they're both a radius, right? How many radiuses could I draw in this circle? Infinite. Infinite ones. So, anywhere that's center to edge, you can put a 5. So, any part of this problem that re requires that. Which means I can also put a 5 there. Okay? And then, I'm going to redraw this kind of like it was in our last problem, in our warm-up. And we know this is 5, 5. How long is that center line? 9. 9. And then, what is true about these two? They are 90 degrees. Those are 90. Why? Because they're tangent. Uh, because they're tangent. Tangent radius, right? Tangent and radius. Those will always be perpendicular. Assuming that we are told it's a tangent, we can't just eyeball it. Remember we did a problem on Monday where we were trying to prove if something was a tangent and it wasn't. There was one degree off that that angle was 89 instead of 90. Anyway, so it says perimeter. So really I just need these two lengths, but they're the same. So let's just find one of them. So 5 squared plus x squared equals 9 squared. Actually, let's, can we just agree that to get rid of a squared, we square root? So 81 minus 25 square rooted. Yeah, I'll go with that. Okay, so our perimeter is just 7.5, 7.5, 5 and 5, so 25. All right, here's a question for you. Why does this board work better on this half than that half. Any techies out there? Recalibrate. It's not that. Really? Yeah, it's not, it's not, I don't mean a sensitivity thing. I mean, when I'm writing over here, it seems to have to pause and think about it, whereas over here it doesn't. It's weird. I have no clue. Yeah. All right, did that help? Do you know what? I don't. I've just noticed when I'm writing on that side of the board, it seems like that issue, like I'm writing, writing, and it always lags and does scribbly kind of thing. Not always, but sometimes. How about number one? Any issues with it? You want me to do number one? Okay, sure. Okay, so DC is tangent, so we know it is for sure. And then, is each statement true for circle N? So measure of DCN and measure of BAN. Let's go mark those first. So DCN is here and BAN is here. And what does that little symbol mean in between? Less than, right? Okay. What is the angle here at DCN? What is the measure of it? What is the measure of DCN? It's 90. Are we sure or are we eyeballing? How are you how do you know? How do we know? Yeah, right. Really? But why? Okay. So we have a radius or diameter and a tangent. Now, were we told that AB is tangent? So how do we know angle NAB or BAN, I guess this calls it? The other blue dot, how do we know what angle that is? Oh, because it's a vertical angle. Okay. So we can copy this 51 here because of the vertical angle theorem. 
And then 51 plus 39 is what? 90. So what does that have to be? 90. Has to be 90, but not because it's a tangent. I mean, now we know it is, but we've proven it without having to be told. So this is false because it says they should. this one should be less. Okay, next one. BA is, is tangent. Is it? We know for sure it is now because we calculated the angle. So yeah, that's true. NB is approximately 64. How are you going to find NB? Draw this triangle in here. <coughs> Try to draw this triangle in here. Okay. Um, we're told this side is five, is 5. We're trying to find NB. What is this side? It's a radius, right? So get used to copying and pasting those radiuses all throughout your picture. Okay, so we have 5 squared plus 4 squared, so it's 25 plus 16. So this is the square root of 41, which is roughly 6.4. Okay. A squared plus B squared. <coughs> well, I want you to work on the rest of the sheets. I'm going to give you 25 minutes to do that, okay? Yeah, that's about five minutes of problem, maybe a little less. Okay, so far people have asked about number four and number whatever the last one is. Yep. Let's do number four. I think this picture actually is good by itself, as long as you add a 90 right there because it's tangent, radius, right, the angle between tangent and radius. Okay, what I was saying, is, you guys have seen me do this in almost all these problems where I pull off the relevant piece of the original picture and redraw it. So, like up here, I redrew that piece, and then on the warm up, it was an in context picture. Redraw the piece that's relevant to what you're doing. Okay? I, and we did that last unit as well, so keep doing it, it's helpful. This one, I think, is already pretty good, because you can see a right triangle pretty clearly. However, it might be helpful anyway to just redraw a right triangle with your uh, labeled sides. So our hypotenuse is r plus r plus 1, which is 2r plus 1, and then this other side, we're told, is 2r minus 1. Okay, now I can ignore the circle picture and just focus on the right triangle, which we've done a whole bunch with this year. And we don't need to worry about Sokotoa because why? Like, how can you look at a problem and know is it Sokotoa or not? Ang we don't have any angles, right? We could we could potentially solve for them after we know R, but we're not going to use them use Sokotoa to find R, because we have no angles. So, the only one left is the Pythagorean Theorem. And since we've started talking about tangents, that's all we've used. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so go to is Pythagorean Theorem. In fact, grab your notes, let's add that little reminder to them. I'm going to put it down here with tangents and radius. You can put it somewhere else if you want. But just put a little reminder that when you're dealing with tangents, think Pythagorean theorem. Just, it's, I'm not saying that that's all you'll ever, ever use. 
but just know that most of these problems, especially for side lengths, is the Okay? Okay. Yeah. I'll be so mad. Well, it might happen. Okay. I added the words right triangle to it because that's what they are. Certain somebody up here is whining. How? Okay. Pythagorean theorem. Uh, the big, big idea always is which one is C, and then the other two don't matter. And C is always the hypotenuse. So 2R plus 1 squared. That whole thing needs to be squared. A, 2R minus 1, and B is just R. Wait. Okay. So we're done with geometry. The rest of this whole entire problem is algebra. It's kind of disappointing. How do you... This is a binomial, 2r minus 1. How do you expand a binomial? Binomial expansion. Like, how do we square it? It's time... Remember... Uh, squaring means times itself, so you have to do the whole thing times the whole thing, not just pick the pieces and square them. And then when you do that, it's distribution. So far, 4r squared minus 2r minus 2r plus 1. Okay? So this, left, this one on the left becomes 4r squared minus 4r when we combine the two in the middle plus 1, plus r squared. On the right, now we're squaring 2r plus 1. It's the same exact idea except for plus, plus. Everybody see that? So over here we're going to get 4r squared plus 4r plus 1. That's the only difference, is the plus 4 in the middle. Okay? From here we just combine all of our like terms. So I'm going to subtract this 4r squared I'm going to subtract this 4r and subtract the 1. Minus 4r squared, minus 4r, and minus 1. So if you look carefully, that cancels, that cancels, that cancels. This cancels. That does not. What is minus... Oh, sorry. <laughs> What is negative 4 minus 4? Eight. Yeah, that's negative 8. And then also, the minus 1s, or the 1s cancel. So those are our two things left over. And I realize this isn't a lot of room, but here's what we have. R squared plus, or excuse me, minus 8R. Equals 0. Okay, after all that subtracting, that's what's left. How do you solve that? It's quadratic, so you could use quadratic formula. I wouldn't, but you could. What else? You could star it. It works. It's weird, but it works. Um, but the best way to do this is GCF. <coughs> what goes into both of those? R. So pull R out and leave your rest, the rest of it in there. And then this is like we did star. We split it. So we either have r equals 0 or r minus 8 equals 0, which is 8. So those are the two possible answers. Are they both good? No, we don't need to check it. 0, you can't have a 0 radius. So, right? R is 0. Wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. It's a radius. So no, R doesn't work. <coughs> so it's just 8. So technically we checked it, but we didn't have to plug it in. Because we can read the picture. Alright, did that help? 
Yeah. Those two, you got it wrong? Yeah. Abby was like, it's not eight, it's two. Well, that's okay. People can learn. All right, last one. Somebody asked about it. It says, find the length of R and AB is tangent. So we know this is 90. And we know this is R because it's a radius also. And so at this point, we have our right triangle where we have 8 squared plus R squared. These two, A, B, and C is the whole thing. So R plus 4 squared. Good? Everybody see where that came from? That looks like RC. I'm going to fix that. So it's just Pythagorean theorem again. So solving for R. So 64 plus R squared. If we expand this out, we get R squared plus 8R plus 16. Write it out. Okay? And then this is... This is where we start combining like terms. And so let's go 16 over here. And we'll get 8R equals 48. Those cancel, those cancel, that's canceled. So, and then this is 48, that's 8R. And then divide by 8. Not eight, sorry, that was supposed to be six. Good. Guess what the critical piece of that whole entire problem was? <coughs> Putting an R right there. After you did that, the rest of the problem was pretty much the same as what we've done. So, how would you summarize this sheet? If you could describe a process that you did over and over and over again. In as few words as you can. Irritating. Uh, okay. For me, it's Pythagorean theorem. Do you agree? How would you summarize the process that you solve each one? Like Pythagorean theorem for pretty much all of them. Um, not all, because these ones down at the bottom. It was just setting those two pieces equal, those two tangents. So that didn't involve the green theorem, but there was a lot of that on here. All right, let's go ahead and check the answers for the rest of these. Number three should have got 36 for the perimeter. 36. And then number, I guess, this... Five, I guess we'll call it, is eight, and then three for those two. On the back, perimeter is 80. Did you like that one? Yeah. It was a lot of copy-paste. And then we just did the last one. So six. How do you feel about... Tangent at this point. Four and a half, four. Four and a half, four. Give me a fist of back. Okay, let's break it down. Go ahead and put your hands down. If I ask you, like, in terms of concept about what a tangent is and relationships from them, like tangents from one point are congruent, tangents to a radius are perpendicular. Like those kind of things? Are we getting there with that? So fist to five, that part. Okay, so that's definitely high. So put them down. How about solving with Pythagorean theorem and expanding binomials? Give me a fist to five on that part. Okay. Still not too bad. Good. Well, Here's what I want you to do. Take 
just on that piece of paper at the bottom, like down here in the space by the last problem, I want you to write down three things that have stuck out to you in what we've learned so far. In the circles unit, like, and I don't want you to say, oh, this sucks, that's number one, no. Okay. Can I do that? No, I just said no. We have covered three sections so far. So if it was me, I would try to summarize each section. But that's what we've covered. In terms of like book work, we have covered three sections. See what you can come up with.